Would you believe that I just have this laying around the office at all times? Well, one, I do, and two, I love to imagine myself as a titan scaling over a walled city and eating the remnants of humanity. No, but really, I want to know how big a titan can actually get. Attack on Titan is a brutal anime depicting the struggle between soldiers sworn to protect a walled city holding the last of humanity and a mysterious and terrifying race of titans whose sole purpose it seems is to consume humans for no other reason but to destroy them. The titans range in height from 5 meters or around 16 feet all the way up to 60 meters or almost 200 feet tall. But how titanic would these titans be? Can you scale humanoid physiology up to 200 feet? When an organism gets titan-sized, so do its bones, like in a sauropod dinosaur, for example. Look at this femur. It is undeniably titanic, and scientists use these bones that these animals leave behind to estimate the total mass of the animal based on how mass scales with the size of these bones. The point is that large organisms' bodies, like long-necked dinosaurs, have to fight against what's called scaling, or the reason why volume and surface area do not increase and decrease at the same rate. Let's use this three-dimensional cube as an example, maybe with one meter sides. If it had one meter sides, then it would have a total volume of one cubic meter, and a total surface area of six square meters. Now what if we made this cube titan-sized and increased the length of each side to maybe 100 meters? Then this cube would have a total volume of 1 million cubic meters, but only a total surface area of 60,000 square meters. See the problem here? If I change the length, the volume increases at a much faster rate than the surface area does. This is where titans might have a problem. The strength of our muscles and bones doesn't come from how big they are volumetrically, but from how much surface area they have in cross-section. Ow. Now consider the humanoid body of the titans like the cube from before. If you were to scale up a titan to something like 60 meters tall, then its volume would increase at a much faster rate than its surface area would, meaning that the surface area of its bones and muscles, the cross-sectional area, would not scale up as fast as its volume, and therefore its mass. In other words, if you scaled up a humanoid body to titan size, even scaled up bones would crack under the weight of the very first step, which is probably good news. Have you seen that anime? It's, it's rough. But let's say that a titan's muscles and bones are made out of something that can handle the forces involved. What then? Then there's the issue of nerves. <laughs> when you're titan-sized, even relaying information through your nerves along your body quickly would be a problem. They have a long ways to go. This is the worst titan I've ever seen. Even the largest titans would have terrible reaction times, maybe responding seconds after an initial stimulus. At least that would make them easier to kill. Stop, stop! You know what? I'm not even mad that without hyper-specialized material bones that attack on titans, titans wouldn't even be able to walk without breaking their legs, let alone pump blood around their bodies or even react swiftly and agilely to attacks. You know why? Because those things scare the crap out of me. But if you're gonna face one, you should still aim for the spinal cord. Why? Because! Science! Yes, yes! Want more science? Check out my last video on how big Batman's cape needs to be. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos. If you want Because Science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, or even suggestions for future episodes, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks!